Ever had butterflies in your stomach? There's a sweet spot for arousal. Too little isn't enough, and too much is, well, too much. So how do you waltz with that, Matilda? There are people who teach martial arts who have never been in a real fight in their lives. That's a little like taking riding lessons from somebody who's never been on a horse. They can't tell you what they don't know. I learned about this the hard way. I'm going to tell you so it won't sucker punch you. There's good news and there's bad news. I'll give you the bad news first. We talk about the four threat responses, flee, yield, posture, or fight. That is, you can run away from the threat, you can surrender to it, you can try to scare it away, or you can try to destroy it. But in every case, you get hit with a tsunami of adrenaline, and your response depends a lot on how you handle that flood. Now that adrenaline rush will help you survive as long as you don't let it get out of control. Uh, in that regard, it's almost like being in love. There are several levels of arousal, more or less coinciding with your heart rate. But remember, physical stress and emotional stress are a little different. With physical stress, your heart rate increases to supply your body with energy and oxygen. With emotional stress, your heart rate increases as a response to adrenaline et al. So when I run hill sprints, I can push my heart rate to the max plus, you know, I, two minutes later, I'm ready to go again. If I go all out, and that's the way I like to go, after four, maybe eight reps, all out, I'm pretty whipped. But the whole time, my mind is clear, my senses are sharp, my coordination is good. Afterwards, I feel relaxed, invigorated. Um, that's not the scene with adrenaline. In his book on combat, Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman lays this out in detail, and you should check it out. But here's the gist. There are different levels of arousal coinciding with your level of adrenaline. Now, these are general categories. There's some overlap and, and certainly individual variability. At a heart rate of around 60 to 80 beats per minute, with allowances for individual variation. You're at ease, you're relaxed, maybe you sleep. Your response time will be relatively slow. Let's call that the white zone. Between 80 and 115 beats per minute, you're on guard. You're awake, aware, alert. I call this the blue zone. Blue for cool, daddy-o. You're ready to respond if you have to, but you don't have to yet. Somewhere around 115 to 145 beats per minute, it's game on. Now you have to act, and you're fully engaged. It's time to hit or run, or maybe hit and run. You're functioning at peak performance. Let's call this one the red zone. Approaching this zone is where you might find you have that pre-performance nausea. Experienced performers learn to routinely empty bladder and bowels before performance. Your palms may sweat, your mouth may be dry, you're jittery, nervous. In addition to increased heart rate, your breathing will become more rapid. The red zone is the badass Goldilocks zone. It feels just right. This is where you really rock and roll. Your complex motor skills, your visual reaction time, and cognitive reaction time are all cooking with gas. You're totally focused and in the moment. All your senses seem to be operating at a whole nother level. You hear things that you can't hear. You see things that you can't see. You do things that you can't do. You feel strong, you feel fast, you feel bulletproof. You don't feel pain the way you should. It's like you're Superman and the world just ran out of fucking kryptonite. <laughs> it feels crazy. It feels crazy. You may feel giddy, elated, 
You may laugh out loud. Superman, hell, you feel like God, or at least a God. You're immortal, Daddy-O. I've been to the Red Zone a couple of times. I'd love to live there, but you can only get a tourist visa. And now we come to the land of too damn much of a good thing. Welcome to the gray zone. When you hit about 145 to 175 beats per minute, things start to go sour. Cognitive processing deteriorates. You may experience tunnel vision, or loss of depth perception, loss of near vision, auditory exclusion, tachypsychia, that is time distortion, and not in a nice way. Your performance begins to break down. You trip, you slip, you slur, your timing is off. You're too early, you're too late. You miss shots you shouldn't miss. You fumble your fucking car keys. You turn a valve the wrong way. So you still know the moves, but you can't find the groove. It's like you're on the water slide to hell. You can kiss all your complex skills goodbye, with one exception. More about that in a second. Above around 175 beats per minute, you're lost in a masquerade. You hit the black zone. And even Rod Serling can't help you. Call it panic, hysteria, terror. It's where emotion drowns a reason. You're no longer the locus of control of your behavior. The tide of fear becomes overwhelming and you're caught in the undertow. You're irrational. Blind flight. Boom, blind right into a wall. Or blind fight, pounding on a wall that's, well, a wall. Or you might be frozen, paralyzed with fear, cringing, submissive. It may be involuntary avoiding of bladder and bowels. Gross motor skills are at the highest levels. You might be able to do some simple things like run. But complex motor skills are at their lowest level. And critical reasoning I've been to the black zone. You don't want to go there. You can trust me on that. As Yogi Berra never said, when it's over, it still ain't over. Depending on the nature of the thing and your own unique individual mojo, Right afterwards, you may feel dizzy, you may feel queasy, or you may vomit your guts out. You might get the shakes so bad you can't light a cigarette, can't even hold a cigarette. You might feel cold and shiver. It'll probably take around half an hour to come down from the adrenaline flood. It helps to drink water, maybe something with sugar in it. It still isn't over. Later, you may become ravenously hungry, or you may be hypersexual, or you may sleep through the whole next day. Part of that is your body trying to rebalance itself. I think another part is being so glad you're alive that you want to feast on all the good things of life, food and sex and sleep. It still isn't over. Even later, you may have nightmares. You may be hypervigilant. You may have flashback reactions to distorted perceptions of non-threatening stimuli. That can last a long time. They call it PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's a little beyond the scope of this particular discussion. But I can tell you, I still have the occasional nightmare 50 years later. I promise you some good news, and I never break a promise. I mentioned that there was one exception to that gray zone onset of deteriorating skill performance. Here it is. Autopilot. 
also called overlearning. When the whole world turns to shit, the only skills you'll be able to execute reliably are those skills that you have rehearsed so many times that you can do them automatically without thinking, no matter what else is going on. It's your body and your brain operating independently of your mind, if I can say that. Look, have, have you ever gotten in your car and driven someplace, taken your, your usual route, right, your, your regular route, and when you get where you're going, you suddenly you realize that you don't know how you got there. That is, you weren't consciously aware of following the road, making the turns, yada, yada. But you must have, because here you are. That's autopilot. See, you, you know your car. You don't have to look down and see where the brake is. You don't have to look 10 feet right ahead of you. You can look out 100 yards ahead, see what's going to happen before what happens happens. You know, that, that herd of deer up ahead on the right going to cross the road. That guy approaching the stop sign too damn fast, he's going to run it. Plus, you can sip coffee and sing along with the radio. That's autopilot. You drive without consciously thinking about driving unless something happens that you have to. You do a skill enough times, that can happen. So learn your skills so well that you can never do them wrong and you never have to think about doing them right. We always say in a pinch you don't rise to the level of the challenge, you sink to the level of your training. That seems to be a law. See, assuming you have the skill, will you be able to access the skill? That's where progressive desensitization comes in. Basically, that means that you do the thing you fear. You do it the same way you eat a dinosaur, one bite at a time. You take it in small increments. You up the ante of stress with every success. My horse taught me how to do this. You may never be able to control the fear, but you can control your response to fear rather than allowing it to control you. Stay out of the gray zone. One way to help you stay out is to breathe. That seems so simple, <laughs> and it is. Simple doesn't mean easy. They call this mm, tactical breathing or mindful breathing or focused breathing. I've heard it called a lot of things. It doesn't matter what you call it. Call it Uncle Charlie as long as you do it. It goes like this. Inhale through your nose, filling your belly fully to a slow four count. Hold it for a count of four. Breathe out for a count of four. Hold for a count of four. And then repeat that maybe two or three times. Now, some people pair it with imagery if that works for you. I knew a guy who used the image of a waterfall. Uh, another guy I know used an image of a tiger. See, that, that was his personal totem. So this is an individual thing. You have to find what works for you. But by using focused breathing, you can get a rope on those killer butterflies and Reset to the level of optimal arousal. Relaxed, alert, aware, and responsive. There's an optimal level of arousal. Too little, and you don't have enough juice to pop. Too much, you crash and burn. Complex tasks, like fencing, boxing, do better with a little lower arousal. A simple task like doing a heavy squat will go better with slightly higher levels of arousal. The trick is to focus and maintain the appropriate level of arousal, the task you have to do. The adrenaline flood and its aftermath can trash you or it can be your friend. Understand it, expect it, manage it. And there's a fighting chance you won't be controlled by it.